Hello, and this is Patrick Cody from the Okemo Valley TV studio. Welcome, and I am joined today by newly elected state representative Tisha Buss from the Windsor 5 district serving Woodstock, Plymouth, and Reading. Um, so as some of you may recall, if you tuned in last year, um, Charlie Kimball, who formerly held that seat, um, gave uh, periodic updates from the State House. Um, and uh, Tisha has uh, shown interest in, in, in continuing that tradition. So Tisha, thank you very much for joining us. I know it was a, a, a busy first week, I'm sure. So uh, I, I appreciate your willingness to come on and make some time for this. Thank you for having me. Great. So tell me, um, week one at the legislature, for those of you who don't know, the legislature opened, was it, Tisha, was it on Tuesday? Uh, was it the first Wednesday. day? On Wednesday of this week. So the session is now, the new biennium, now in, uh, in session. And uh, Tisha, if you want to share any first impressions uh, from under the Golden Dome? Excellent. Yes, it was a very exciting week to get everyone sworn in. It's a lot of uh, exciting pomp and circumstance. So my daughter uh, was actually able to come along with my mom and dad from Illinois. So it was exciting for them to see me get sworn in. And we did a legislative training back in November, uh, which was really, really helpful. We spent a full week here at the State House just learning, learning, learning um, about joint fiscal, uh, legislative council, how we interact. And basically, you know, they tell young legislators, uh, sit back and, and listen and ask a lot of questions. So that is what this week has been about. And it's, uh, it's also, we've learned our committee assignments and then of course received the governor's address. Hmm. So uh, what did your family think? They're very excited. Uh, they they kind of can't believe that I chose to run for office and it wasn't something that was necessarily on my radar, but I was asked and I've done a lot of work in my community and they're, as soon as I was asked, I realized there were quite a few things that I would like to work on here and have since been meeting a lot of other legislators that, you know, this is the week where people say, hey, I've been working on this bill, I've been working on this bill. And then they send them over to you or that, you know, they post them up so that you can take a peek and decide whether or not this is something that you want to get on board with or start working on the editing process with them. So it's exciting to meet the, the folks that have been here for years so that we can learn from them and then take ideas that uh, you know are brand new to us because we're brand new legislators and realize, oh, these things have been on the wall of committee rooms for a while and they just haven't made it off the wall. And hopefully they will this year. Mm -hmm. So talk to me a little bit about that, about what, um, I mean, you sort of alluded to it, what, uh, you know, wasn't really necessarily on your radar to run for office, but what really was the uh, impetus? What really motivated you to, to, to seek this seat to serve uh, the good people of Woodstock, Plymouth, and Reading? Well, housing is a huge part of that. And when you look at the lot, a, a lot of the state programs that are for housing, they're certainly geared towards larger populated areas. So, you know, if, if a developer is going to create a bunch of rental units, that person's likely going to create a large building with 18 or more units because there's, it takes a certain number of units to just make that process make financial sense. But in our rural community, that doesn't always fit. So we have to look at housing differently. So I came here to find, I joined the rural caucus. So, a, you know, caucus is like a collaborative group of, a, of legislators that will put forth one bill, they'll call it an omnibus bill. And it's a statement of all of the rural needs. And then in the course of that, the caucus decides which ones will extract and put through as individual bills. So working on housing is a huge part of that because we've certainly had folks that have received jobs here and a month later have to say, I'm sorry, but I can't find housing. We hired a, a, you know, a new director for the community campus, which is an after school program in Woodstock. And it was terrifying to, to, find, to, to think we have this amazing person and they may not be able to move here with their young wife because we can't find them housing. 
And uh, he ended up staying with friends of the school for a month and a half before he could get his apartment and close on it. Right. You know, it, it is a real issue um, in, in, in really across the state, but certainly we feel it in, uh, in this area. And I know that you recently hosted, along with Jill Davies, a, a, a forum in Plymouth. You want to tell me a little bit about that? Yes, it was a wonderful forum. Uh, Jill has done a, a very wonderful job of, of increasing housing um, options and uh, money available to small scale housing. So if you have an accessory dwelling unit, that's you know like a, an in-law apartment, then the Woodstock Economic Development Commission uh, worked with the housing committee so that they could provide grants for that, but also some technical assistance. So she was incredibly helpful. And we went through a list of programs that were accessible to rural Vermont. And the challenge is that in an hour and a half discussion, there are lots of challenges. You as a homeowner need to become a developer because a developer isn't gonna work on one, two or three units. And so the goal is for us to work together to try to find a way to coach homeowners through this process so that we want rural Vermont to stay looking like rural Vermont. That's, that's the reason why we love it. But if a house that's huge and it's housing one person could turn into a duplex or a triplex, that would be wonderful. It would house more people, but we need to help that homeowner get from point A to the move-in. And uh, are you, so are you, is the intention to bring that, um, have that conversation throughout the district? Like why, why, why did you do it? I only know that you did the one in Plymouth because we had a camera there and we've been recording, you know, we recorded, we've been airing it over the last couple of weeks. Um, but uh, is that something that you and, and, and Jill uh, have teamed up on to do, uh, to carry forward and have more of these? We haven't set one for Woodstock or Reading yet. Uh, Woodstock's had a lot of meetings surrounding housing, so they probably already have more of a strong needs assessment completed. Plus, I know that Woodstock was included in a huge housing study that was done called Keys to the Valley because it was close enough to, you know, Hanover and Lebanon. So it was included in that. Reading is a town that I uh, certainly need to reach out to and get to know a lot more. I did a lot of campaigning there but I haven't spent as much time visiting their town hall and learning their individual needs. Although I do know they did a sewer and water infrastructure study, which uh, monies came down to, to towns to see if, if that was a viable option. Because when you have a, a compact downtown like Reading, you could have a business there, but if you don't have room for septic or you don't have room to dig that well, then you're really limited as to what can actually happen in the downtown area, which is where we want to concentrate business expansion. Mm -hmm. um, so with that in mind, uh, before you tell us what uh, committee you've been assigned to, uh, I am interested in hearing what, your, um, what, you, what you were hoping. I mean, I know that you get to put a wish list, right? And you send that to the, uh, the, the House Speaker, Jill Kowinski's uh, and and, uh, and her team to, that then then have to I think in the house the way it works is they actually have to go through all the members and, 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 and individually assign you committees is that correct? That's correct. So you so get that's to 150. Play. Yeah, so that's a big task, and you've already got your assignment. Is that correct? That's. Correct. And so, what were you hoping for? Well, my first choice was human services because of my experience in childcare, but um, actually, my second choice was education, which is actually where I landed. But right. it's funny, you know, you, you put out your choices so far in advance. And then as you meet other legislators and go through the training process, I kind of reconfigured what I thought were my priorities, which actually became more rural, like issues of the rural caucus. And so then I, I kind of wondered if I would be on housing or commerce and community development. And I, I had that in my head that that's where I was going to land. And so when I got education, I was a little bit surprised, but um, I shouldn't have been based on my priorities. Um, my, my daughter has a learning disability and that's been, uh, that's been challenging. And it's taught me a lot about how we teach literacy. So I'm very excited on those fronts. 
I am one of those potentially odd people that enjoys looking at taxes and how budgets play out. So I, that is going to be a large part of this committee's I job is to, we will be looking at uh, the potential for an income-based education finance system, uh, most likely looking at uh, the budget overall for the agency of education. And then we will also look at the new, how the new Supreme Court ruling uh, will come down to make sure that we, as a committee, need to ensure that our tax dollars go to high quality equity, equitable education for all students. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. You ended up on uh, on one of your top choices, so um, yeah. so you must be feeling good about that. And uh, you are entering the the state house uh, and in this biennium for the first time, and it, it's almost back to normal, I, I guess, for the first time in three. You know, the past two sessions have been either fully remote or some hybrid, which was last session between um, remote and in person. And now you're back fully in person, um, and people are uh, lobbyists and the press, and it's almost back to business as usual. Um, and being a first-time legislator, maybe you don't have that, uh, you know, that transition. Exactly. You know, what, so what are you hearing from your colleagues about that transition back to business as usual? It's a breath of fresh air for most people. You know, there's still a COVID concern. And in fact, there was a COVID case that was announced this morning, but everybody just masked up and, and went through the day. But um, it is more effective to work face-to-face -face in what we do. I know uh, there are a ton of people that work from home remotely, and we've attracted a lot of wonderful folks to Vermont that work remotely, and, and I, I applaud them for that. But considering how collaborative this process is, it's really exciting to be back in person. Yeah, I mean, there's pluses right. and minuses, it seems for sure, but it's really hard to uh, govern by, um, you know, through Zoom or, or you know, uh, <laughs> remotely, it, we, we would seem. Um, not being in government myself, but that's that's my impression. Um, and we have been airing, so we'll make sure that now that we know that you're on the House Education Committee, we'll, we'll be sure to pick up those recordings. And we do air the um, the reg all the the meetings, the the committee meetings from our local legislators. So uh, and observing that over the last couple of years, I have seen the how challenging it can be to to govern via Zoom. Um, and so it is, I'm sure, as you said, a breath of fresh air. So that must feel good. Um, uh, while we still have you, I want to get your impressions of uh, the governor's address, which was uh, yesterday from the state house. I assume you were you were there for it. Mm -hmm. Do you have any impressions? There in the same room. It's very exciting. Um, that was probably the most exciting part of this week. The Supreme Court justices came in. The senators are there. Past governors, um, wonderful singers, and uh, yeah. And then everyone got sworn in: the Secretary of State, the Attorney General the treasurer, and then, of course, the governor. And, you know, the, the governor's address hit on two topics that are really powerful and hit with my, uh, they align with my passions, which is housing, 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 and the rural development piece. We definitely have a disadvantage being in these smaller communities and you know, whether or not it's uh, sewer or wastewater, or whether or not we're small businesses as opposed to larger businesses, so we can't get as much employee training. It's really important for us to focus on rural Vermont. When we were in training, we did this little exercise. There are 50 of us in training, and we were told to stand in the part of the state that we represent. And it's real palpable when you see this huge group of people in the northern part of the state, and then you see all of us all spread out. So when we're talking about dispatch being uh, dissolved on the state level, and local level, we have to pick that up. You know, that's harder when we're spread out communities. So that's the kind of work that really needs to be done this year. And I'm really excited to hear the governor getting on board with that. We have differing opinions, it seems, sometimes about how childcare will get implemented or paid family medical leave. So I really need to do my homework so that when those bills come through, I want to know the difference between 
what the governor proposed and what we proposed and and the impetus behind it. You know, what I hear from so far my legislative colleagues is that the paid family medical leave is is more expensive uh, when it's optional. Um, and it's so vitally necessary uh, that employers have really requested this. It's not simply employees. So the amount of learning that I have to do this session is extraordinary, and I'm very excited to do it. And one last thing is, uh, so, so how, how are you, are you, are you commuting? commuting? Do you, you have, have a place, place to stay up there? there? I mean, what's, what's your regular, regular week, week look like? like? Have you worked, worked that out yet? yet? I have worked that out yet. I'm, I'm very uh, fortunate that I did find a place up here. So I drive up on Tuesdays and stay Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night. Mm -hmm. And then I drive back on Friday afternoons. So it's, um, you know, the drive up and over Barnard is not something I wanted to do on a daily basis. And I actually had a flat tire on my way to work here uh, because I hit a huge pothole. And mm -hmm. um, so, you know, the less driving, the better. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that's good to hear. And we look forward to hearing more um, and, and having you on uh, throughout the session as your time allows. And uh, until then, I, I, I wish you well and uh, we'll be paying attention. Thanks so much, Patrick. I appreciate you having me on. Thank you. You bet. Okay.